What's up guys, it's Danta. Now I've been thinking about what kind of video to do next for World of Warcraft. So, I went through some of the comments from my previous videos and I saw some people say things like I just started playing WoW, but what the hell should I do? Or I recently started with World of Warcraft, but it's just so overwhelming and confusing. So, I thought why not do what I did for Dota 2 and create a World of Warcraft Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Now, what I will do is just go over the most important things while trying to keep it short and easy to follow, especially for the new players. But before we get started, I have to admit that the new player experience in World of Warcraft isn't that great. But do you know what is great? Today's sponsor, Mana. Mana is the debit card and checking account for gamers. It allows you to earn perks and points by paying and playing. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can spend those points that you earn in the mana shop. Here you will be able to spend your points on a wide range of items, like thousands of video games, hundreds of gift cards, and a variety of gaming gear and tech hardware. Now, here's how it works. For every dollar you spend, you can earn up to five points on digital gaming products available in the mana shop. You will also get up to three points on selected gaming and entertainment subscriptions and one point on all your other everyday purchases. Another cool thing about this is that you are also able to connect your game accounts to Mana and earn points by basically just playing video games. Now there are two types of subscriptions for gamers. You have Mana Lite, which is available for $35 a year, and you have Mana Pro, which is available for $135 a year. But if you use the code DANTAMANALITE, you will get a $5 discount on the Mana Lite subscription or if you use Danta Mana Pro, you will get a $10 discount on the Mana Pro subscription. Now with Mana Pro, you will get around $300 worth of perks with things like gift cards, subscriptions and services that you might enjoy. Now this also includes the exclusive physical Damascus Steel card, which is a really cool looking card. Now, if the Mana Debit card piqued your interest, then open your Mana account today by clicking the link in the description below. All right, so the first thing you see whenever you log in is the server or realm list, and you will have to choose a server to play on. Now, sometimes the game just throws you on a new player server, but if that happens, you can click on the change realm button and you will be able to choose a server on your own. Now, if you have a friend that plays WoW, it will be a lot easier to choose a server because you can just join theirs. But if you don't have a friend that plays World of Warcraft, then you will probably be like, okay, so there are a 110 servers, at least on EU. Which one should I choose? Now, I won't lie. Choosing a server can be tough for new players. And the main reason for this is because some servers are one-sided. So for example, Draenor, my main Horde server, is about 90% Horde and 10% Alliance, if not less. Now, for those that don't know what the Horde and Alliance are, these two are basically the two factions that you can choose from in World of Warcraft. Now, with some servers being one-sided, it makes choosing a server a little bit more complicated. And since I don't want to make it too complicated for a new player, I'll just put a list of good server names on the screen for each faction including RP realms for role players. Now, for those that want to look up how balanced a server is, I'll put a link in the description below to a website that shows the total population of every server in the game. The only thing that I hope that Blizzard is going to do in the future is just reduce the amount of servers that we have right now. Like maybe do something with mega servers because uh, whenever a new player logs in and sees that many servers, they get confused before they can even start playing the game. Once you've decided on a server, you need to choose a faction. Now, as I mentioned before, there are two factions in the game. We have the Horde, which mostly get referred to as the bad guys, even though this new expansion is all about family and friends right now, and the Alliance, which most people see as the good guys. Now, to be honest, factions don't really matter that much anymore, except for that each faction has a different set of races that you can choose from. So my advice to you is to just look at which race you like the most and go for that faction. So after selecting a server and faction, usually driven by the race that you want to play, you need to pick a class. Now I can give you a list of some of the easier classes to play, but I think you'll have a lot more fun if you just go for the class that seems the most fun to you. There's only one exception to this, and that's that some classes are able to tank or heal while others aren't. So if you, for example, want to become a tank, you should not choose a priest. You can always make a new character and try out different race slash class combinations, especially since leveling doesn't take that long. 
I'll put a list up on the screen for those that do want to know which classes are easier to play. But my advice, once again, is to just pick whatever the hell looks the coolest and the most fun to you. So, Blizzard has finally allowed UI customization since the Dragonfly pre-patch. Now, you don't have to do this if you feel like the UI is already fine as it is which is probably the case for most new players. But for those that do want to customize their UI, here's how you do that. First up, you press escape and after that you go to edit mode. Here you can modify the UI to your liking. So for instance, to adjust action bars, all you gotta do is just drag them around or tweak with their settings to change size, padding or rows. Now, if you want to have more action bars, all you have to do is click on the action bar settings and you will be able to activate up to eight action bars. That's just an example of how to change action bars. There's a lot more you can change, but for the sake of not making this video way too long, I think you should just mess around with it on your own and take your time to design a UI that you like. Now, just one more thing about the UI. You can import and share UI layouts. So if you like the layout on my screen, I'll have a code and some info in the description below that you can copy and import so that your UI will basically look the same as mine. So say you want to press E on your keyboard and have the game use a specific skill. Then you need to deal with keybinds. Now to access the keybinds window, Press escape, select options and go to key bindings. Here you will have a lot of things you can mess around with. Now, if you are a person that already played MMOs before, I'd say just go through it and change everything to your liking. But to keep it simple for a new player, we will only bother with the action bars. So let's say you want to change the key binds on the first action bar. All you have to do is click on it in the key bind menu and here you will see all the key binds tied to the first action bar. What you can do here is just click on, for example, the fourth action button and keybind it to whatever the hell you want. It's that simple. The same thing goes for action bar two, three, four, and so on. Oh, and by the way, if you have a mouse with multiple buttons, you can also keybind things to that. Now, if you didn't change your UI, you probably also haven't enabled more action bars yet. So if you want to have more action bars, you can go to the action bars menu, which is in the same options panel. Now let's go over some of the settings that I think are pretty useful for new players. To access the options panel, all you have to do is press escape and select options. Now one of the first things that we see here is the auto cancel away mode. I think this is enabled for everyone right away and it basically makes it so that whenever you start moving after being AFK, the game will automatically put you out of AFK mode. I would keep it like that if I were you. Then there is interact on left click. You can enable this if you want to pick up items or talk to NPCs by clicking your left mouse button instead of the right button. Another thing that we have over here is the auto loot option. Auto loot is something that you can enable if you want to automatically loot everything instead of having to click on the items one by one. Now I have this disabled because your bag might fill up with a lot of trash. Now as you can see my auto loot key is set to shift which means that whenever I press shift while looting, it will also start looting everything automatically. So having auto loot disabled doesn't mean that you can't auto loot. Then we have one of the best settings there is, combine bags. This will make it so that whenever you open one of your bags, it will open up every bag and combine them in one single window. This used to be only possible with a bag add-on before the UI update, but now it's a built-in feature of the game. Enable interact key is useful if you want to interact with NPCs or objects by pressing a key. So if you enable this and set a key bind, you could talk to NPCs by simply pressing the G key, for example. Now that's it for the controls window. Next up, we have the interface tab. Now under names, you can select which names you want to see on your screen. I usually only have my own name, friendly players and enemy players enabled. As for nameplates, I highly recommend always show nameplates, especially enemy unit nameplates, because it allows you to see the enemies more clearly. Plus it shows their level and how much HP they have. Under display, you will find tutorials. I have it disabled because after playing the game for around 15 years, I think I pretty much know the basics by now. <laughs> but as a new player, it might be smart to keep it enabled. Then we have status text. Um, status text shows health bar information when you hover over an ally or enemy. I set mine to both to see both the percentage and the total amount of health. Then we have the combat tab. There might actually only be one option that I'd say like could be important for a new player and that's the self cast. If you set that to auto, it will automatically cast buffs or heals on yourself whenever you are not targeting another player. That's finally it for the options. Now there's a lot here. 
So even though I went over what I think are the most important things, you can always check all these options out for yourself and mess around with them. Now I didn't go over the system and accessibility tab because I never bothered with those, except for the graphics tab to set my graphics to max, but that's actually it. But if you are colorblind, want to enable cinematic subtitles or need to adjust settings for motion sickness, then the accessibility tab will be also be worth checking out. Questing and killing mobs are your primary ways of getting XP as you explore Azeroth. You will find these exclamation marks on the map. Those are quests. Now, most of these quests involve tasks like retrieving items or killing a certain amount of mobs. Once you've completed these tasks, the exclamation mark will turn into a question mark. And that means that you can turn in the quest. Now, completing quests will award you with gear and some good amount of XP. Oh, and for those that don't know, all your gear has an item level. And the higher your item level, the better equipped you are, which means that you will be able to handle harder content. Also, just a tip for those that want to keep moving while also looking at the map, you can open up your map by pressing M. And if you click on the arrow over here, it will make the map smaller, which lets you look at the map while also still being able to move your character and see what happens around you. Now, when you have enough XP, you will level up and become stronger. Now, for a while now, you don't have to worry about going to a trainer to learn new spells because you will automatically learn new spells at certain levels now. Whenever you reach level 10, you will be able to choose a specialization like Protection Warrior for tanking or Fury Warrior for DPS. From level 10 onwards, you will receive a talent point with each level you gain. With these talents, you will be making your build. Now, don't worry, you can reset your talents whenever you are in a safe area. This won't cost you anything, so you can experiment with different builds as much as you like. For those that want a build guide to see on what to spend their talents, I'll place a link in the description below, which will bring you to Wowhead, which is basically a site where you can find anything WoW related. Now, before we go over what else there is to do besides leveling up, I just want to say that even though leveling up goes pretty fast, if you would just focus on going from quest to quest, I would highly recommend for you to just walk around, explore the world and do whatever the hell you want, because that's what I feel like is what makes WoW fun. But hey, if you want to rush to the end game, by all means, you can do that too. Anyway, let's get into what else there is to do in WoW besides leveling. So transmog and mount farming. This is basically what I spend most of my time on. Now, while World of Warcraft has its own endgame content, I always say that this is the true endgame, at least for me. I log in, run through old raids and dungeons and just farm some cool looking gear and mounts that I'm still missing. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with transmogrification or transmog in World of Warcraft, it basically allows you to change the appearance of your current gear. So for example, you can swap the look of your helmet for a cooler one that you found. However, keep in mind that the gear type restrictions apply. So if you are a cloth wearer like a mage, you can only transmog cloth gear, not plate, leather or mill. Now World of Warcraft has a lot of raids and dungeons, and a lot of those are easily soluble whenever you reach max level. You will basically one shot bosses. Now, some of these raids and dungeons are also easily soluble at level 60, so if you don't have the Dragonflight expansion yet, then you will also be able to solo some raids and dungeons. So here's basically how it works. You look up which gear you like, you enter the raid, defeat the boss, and hope for the item to drop. Now once it drops and you loot it, then the item will be added to your appearance tab, making it available for transmogrification. By the way, if you want to transmog something, you need to do that at either the transmogrification station, which is located in your faction's main city or in several other cities. Alternatively, if you see someone with a yak mount, you can just click on this little guy and you'll be able to transmog your gear as well. That's basically a short version of how transmog works. Now, moving on from transmog to mounts, as I mentioned, World of Warcraft has many raids and dungeons and not only does cool gear drop there, but you can also find mounts. Now, some mounts have very low drop rates, like 0.1%, but others have higher chances or even a guaranteed drop. Some mounts can also be obtained by completing certain achievements, quests, world events, or even by killing a certain mob in the open world. All right, so next up we have dungeons. Now, whenever you reach level 15, you will be able to queue up for dungeons by clicking on the eye over here. 
Dungeons will basically award you with gear and some decent amount of XP. Now in World of Warcraft, you will be going through dungeons with a tank, healer and three DPS. Now as a new player, I would only join a dungeon as a tank or a healer if you know how to keep aggro. In other words, the attention of the enemy. Or if you know how to heal your group. Because if you don't know how to keep your group alive and safe from being hit by enemies, then, well, let's just say that people will start molding a lot. And uh, people can be toxic and wow. <laughs> so if you want to be safe, you should just queue up as a DPS because all that matters then is that you attack the mobs that your tank is attacking. If you like fighting other players, or in other words, PvP, you can start queuing up for Battlegrounds whenever you reach level 10. The word Battleground basically already sums it up. You get thrown into a Battleground with other people and just fight each other. When you win a Battleground, you will get honor points and you can spend those on gear at a vendor. Now for those that want to know what kind of build is good for the class to PvP with, I have a link in the description below that will lead you to WoWhat's PvP guides. In World of Warcraft, you have a lot of professions that you can learn. There are primary professions and secondary professions. Some of these professions will allow you to craft mounts, cool transmog, or toys. You can learn all secondary professions, which are cooking, fishing, and archaeology, but you can only learn two primary professions. Now, as for the primary professions, you can choose from alchemy, engineering, enchanting, mining, herbalism, leatherworking, skinning, jewel crafting, tailoring, inscription, herbalism, and blacksmithing. Now, if you want to learn one of these professions, all you have to do is talk with a guard in the city and he will mark the trainer on your map. So if you like crafting, this will be something you can spend your time on too. So do you like Pokemon? Well, if you do, then you might like the battle pet system in World of Warcraft. Basically, you just capture pets in the open world and battle with them to capture other kinds of pets. Now, they can't evolve, which would have been way cooler, you know. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for Pokemon and uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> now, whenever you reach max level, you will be able to do Mythic Plus, which are dungeons, but on a much higher difficulty. If you've played Diablo, it's basically like Greater Rifts or Nightmare Dungeons. You will start on Mythic Zero difficulty, and whenever you complete the dungeon, you will get a key which allows you to do a Mythic 2 dungeon. You basically upgrade the key over and over if you finish the dungeons in time. Now, just as with Diablo's Nightmare Dungeons, you will have additional dungeon affixes. They basically make the dungeons harder by adding more mechanics to the dungeon. For example, lava that erupts around you, or pools spawning from mobs that die, which will damage you and heal the enemy if they stand in it. At the end of each dungeon, there will be a chest, which can contain loot for you. The loot that you get out of it is based on which key level you just completed. So if you completed a plus 20 key, you will get a lot better gear than when you complete a plus 2 key. Raids are basically larger dungeons where a huge group of players try to defeat stronger bosses. There are three difficulties. You have LFR, also known as looking for raid, which is the easiest version of the raid which you can queue up for. Then we have normal, heroic, and eventually the hardest difficulty, mythic. The higher your item level, the higher raid difficulty you can partake in, if you don't get declined over and over because you're not playing a meta class, according to some. Now, raiding can be time-consuming, and I would suggest finding a guild and try to join them on, for example, a normal raid to get to know the raid mechanics a bit. Now, the reason why I suggest finding a guild is because then you usually will be with a group of people that know the mechanics. You can also join randoms with the group finder tool, but um, I might know why Asmongold started getting bald. I don't know, I think that looks decent. So for those that like to PvP, there are arenas that you can participate in. You will have RPGs, which are rated battlegrounds. Basically battlegrounds, but you will get a rating for them. And we have Solo Shuffle, which is the same as a 3v3, but it lets you solo queue in it. Now, I'm not a great fan of Solo Shuffle, because sometimes you will be in a queue for an hour. Now, arenas, RPGs, and Solo Shuffle all will give you a rating, and the higher your rating is, the higher item level gear you are able to buy with the currency that you get. So, that's it for the endgame activities.
Okay guys, we are almost at the end. All that's left is the add-ons part. And maybe I'll give some extra advice after that, but we are finally nearing the end. <laughs> so add-ons. Now, I get kind of annoyed by the fact that I have to tell you to install add-ons, especially as a new player, when all you want to do is just install the game and start playing right away. Don't get me wrong, you can start playing World of Warcraft without installing any add-ons. But the fact is that some add-ons make playing the game a lot easier and will give you more options. So for those that do want to use add-ons, the first thing that you want to do is install CurseForge. CurseForge is a program that will automatically install the add-ons that you want. So you won't have to do it manually. Now, when you have installed CurseForge, you can search for an add-on and click on install. When you do that, it will automatically be installed. Now, there are a lot of add-ons that you can use, but there are two that I think you should really get. First up, we have Deadly Boss Mods. Um, this is an add-on that will tell you what to do in a dungeon or raid. It will tell you when to move away, when to stun, when to stack on each other. It tells you literally everything. And it will make life a lot easier for you as a new player. The other add-on is called Details Damage Meter. This is an add-on that you want to install if you want to see how much damage you are doing. Because World of Warcraft does not have an in-game damage meter. You can also use this add-on to see how someone died or how much you are healing. Now besides those two, there are a lot more add-ons that are great. <laughs> For example, I like Immersion. This makes it so that instead of seeing a quest book when you are talking with an NPC, it will give you this speech bubble and you can then press space to continue dialogue or to accept quests. So yeah, it basically makes WoW more immersive. <laughs> Another add-on that I like is Narcissus. It will make your character info screen look a lot better, but it also lets me make cool screenshots or even videos of my character. Now the last add-on that I want to talk about is all the things, and this is by far my favorite add-on. Like it says, it shows you all the things you can collect on your character. This add-on is the reason why I have around 13 warriors right now, it basically shows you what transmog, mounts, toys, battle pets, etc. you are missing. And it also tells you where you can get them. Now I love this add-on and without it I think I would log in way less. Because this add-on actually gives me always something to do. Now for those that are interested, I'll have a list of all my add-ons in the description below. So guys, this will be the last part of the video, and then you finally won't have to hear me talk anymore. <laughs> so first up, if you get confused by the story, don't worry, you are not the problem, it's normal. All new players start in the 7th expansion of World of Warcraft, which is BFA. Soon people will start in Dragonflight, but if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I have no idea who at Blizzard thought that would be a great idea. I hope they make a questline with the most important parts of the story from classic all the way up to the last expansion and let new players just go through that. Of course it needs to not be a drag to progress through but I just feel like World of Warcraft has a lot of cool stories and it's just sad to see that they don't do anything with it. And the last thing that I want to say is if you want to rush to the end game I'm not stopping you. You do you but man I'd say take your time and do whatever the hell you like to do. Quest around, explore, try new classes, collect cool gear, level up your professions. If you like to RP, join an RP guild and RP with them. Like there is a lot to do. And in my opinion, rushing to the end game on your first character can be a huge mistake. Now there's a lot of things happening in World of Warcraft. And I try to pick out the most important things that I feel like are, you know, what a new player should know. But... I might have missed things. So if I missed something that you would say like, yeah, that could have been important for a new player. Or if you have any questions or suggestions, just let me know in the comment section below. Now, I hope you guys liked this video and that it was helpful for at least some of you. If it was, please drop a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more. With that being said, thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.